Good morning. I invite you to stand and join me as we begin our worship with the prayer of collective welcoming. And we are rejoicing in the presence of Christ as we mark this Laetere Sunday. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, living within us, sent to St. Peter's all who are hurting or in need, all who are searching for you or for answers in their lives, prepare us this day to receive them as Christ would. Give us discerning hearts so that everyone who crosses our th- feels welcomed in the spirit of your love. As an individual sent by you who will enrich our lives. And most of all, O oh God, let this be a place of love and acceptance all your children. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. As you are able, let us kneel together for the recitation of the Decalogue. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods but me. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart, We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which giveth life to the world, evermore give us this bread 
that he may live in us and we in him, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. reading from the book of Numbers. From Mount Hor they set out by way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, but the people became impatient along the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. The Lord then sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, we have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you and pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed to the people and the Lord said to Moses, make a poisonous serpent, set it on a pole and everyone who was bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze, put it on a pole and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm today is portions of Psalm 107. We will read responsively by full verse. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever. But all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took to rebellious ways. They were afflicted because of their sins. They abhorred all manner of food and drew near to death's door. That they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them and saved them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and tell of his acts with shouts of joy. A reading from Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. You were dead through trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler in the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of the flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive again in Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Jesus Christ for good works, which God has prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, 
so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe in him are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. You've promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us. Grant us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Uh, I'd like to make this the uh, Oscar portion of the sermon. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Reverend Marshall, Reverend Liz, uh, seminarian Ava, for asking me to do this. Um, special thanks to my debate colleagues for all their support and input. Uh, special thanks to my son, my brother, and Lauren and Basha for listening. One of my favorite popular songs is Doris Day's 1956, Que Sera Sera. I was reminded of it the other day when Turner ran The Man Who Knew Too Much. This is the verse I most identify with and its well-known refrain. When I grew up and fell in love, I asked my sweetheart what lies ahead. Will we have rainbows day after day? And here's what my sweetheart said. Que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. Que sera, sera, what will be, will be. For 42 years, my sweetheart was the rock, the faith-based anchor of our relationship. She brought me to church and by extension to Jesus. However, I have suffered from fear my entire life, some of it legitimate. The rest was that catastrophizing fear that does nothing but paralyze you and prevents you from seeing the faith and grace that will lift you up when you need it the most. My fear in the beginning that our relationship wouldn't last my fear in the middle that our life together would be defined by mustard sandwiches and generic boxes of mac and cheese. Fear that we couldn't afford the house. Fear of becoming a parent. Fear of being a parent. Fear of losing her to chronic cardiac issues. Fear that my hospice care would be inadequate. Fear of what comes next. The journalist Tim Alberta, who was being interviewed about his reporting on the American evangelical movement made a statement that for me has become one of those life changers. Fear is the antithesis of faith, or as I remembered it, faith is the opposite of fear. Amory's faith was always something that was both inspirational and aspirational to me. During one of Reverend Marshall's last visits to the house, he asked her if she was afraid to die. Without skipping a beat, she turned to him and said, no, I've seen Jesus. Faith is the opposite of fear. As I understand it, Lent is a season of reflection, a season of grace, a chance to examine your fears and to seek to do something about them. The math of Lent works out. 40 days of fasting and self-denial correspond to the 40 days Jesus spent being tempted in the desert. In trying to figure out how to best approach this activity, I called my friend Ken Barrett, former debate coach at Tenafly, who's a traveling preacher for his church. Something Ken said set me to thinking. 
He told me that Lent is a period to seek God's grace, which can only be acquired through faith. In that way, I think Lent and self-reflection is designed to mitigate any fear, since faith allows God's grace to negate any fear that you may encounter in that 40-day trial. If grace is to be had through faith, you have to find a way to check your fear at the door. The APA Dictionary of Psychology defines fear as a basic, intense emotion aroused by the detection of imminent threat involving an immediate alarm reaction that mobilizes the organism by triggering a set of physiological changes. These include rapid heartbeat, redirection of blood flow away from the periphery toward the gut, tensing of the muscles, general mobilization of the organism to take action. Kind of like I'm feeling right now. <laughs> In December of 2021, my sweetheart was diagnosed with grade four glioblastoma, brain cancer, terminal, nine to 20 month life expectancy. I was paralyzed with fear while she sat there calm and composed. All through the initial months of care, that fear lurked in my every thought and every action, but she was calm. All throughout the final hospitalizations and eventual discharge to hospice, I was afraid, but she was never afraid because unlike me, she had faith in God that it would all turn out okay. She had that faith because she had seen Jesus, because faith is the opposite of fear. That said to me, faith is a bit trickier to define. The Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy suggests that there are as many as 10 functions of faith in theology. Two that were of interest to me, faith as belief and faith as an act of trust. And if that doesn't work for you, you can try faith and hope. Stanford defines faith as follows. To have theist faith might be defined with a holding a belief with theological content that God exists, is benevolent towards us, has a plan of salvation, etc., where this belief is also held with sufficient firmness and conviction. Richard Swinburne labels this the Thomist, as in St. Thomas Aquinas, view of faith. The person of religious faith is the person who has theoretical conviction that there is a God. That was the faith that Amory had in abundance. In the 42 years I knew her and loved her and worshiped with her, her faith in that benevolent God and that saving God never faltered. Everything we got, we got the hard way, but she knew that God's grace would see us through. As I said before, her faith was both inspirational and aspirational. I can tell you that her faith was never theoretical. It was genuine, sincere, and fortified through prayer. Through faith and grace, fear be damned, full speed ahead. The more I researched this, the more I came to realize that I might have a bit more faith than I give myself credit. Because Anne-Marie's faith was infectious. You couldn't spend five minutes with her and not be taken with her faith in the Lord. My faith, her lasting gift to me, is built a little bit differently. Wilfred Cantwell Smith wrote that while faith is held as a virtue, he argues that faith is not a belief, but something of a quite different order. Smith's understanding of faith requires assent in the dynamic and personal sense of rallying to what takes to be the truth with delight and engagement. Smith emphasizes that to maintain faith, God involves a ready to act, perhaps by relying on God in relevant ways or in grounded in practical commitment like saying yes to a lay sermon, like spending your life with someone special, like being a debate coach. As for grace, J. Gresham Mockton offers the very center and core of the whole Bible is the doctrine of the grace of God. Justin Holcomb writes that grace is one of the most important concepts in the Bible, Christianity, and the world. It is most clearly expressed in the promises of God revealed to us in the scriptures and embodied in Jesus Christ. Reverend Paul Zahn, rector at All Saints Episcopal Church in Chevy Chase, Maryland, said this about grace. Grace is an unconditional love toward a person who does not deserve it. And as someone who doesn't really deserve it, this idea intrigued me. In his grace, God is willing to forgive us and bless us even though we fall short of living righteously. Lent is all about having the faith to seek God's grace in times of fear. 
Grace is the love of God shown to the unlovely, the peace of God given to the restless, unmerited favor of God. And maybe Anne-Marie was right. God did, in fact, love this unlovely, undeserving, unmerited sinner. Two verses in this morning's psalm stand out as examples of God's grace at work. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. And from today's epistle, for by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Jesus Christ for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. I'd offer that the mercy referenced is the articulation of grace through mercy, mercy, grace, and faith. Against that forceful combination, fear has no chance. One of my favorite examples of grace and faith overcoming fear in history are from the lines of John Winthrop's 1630 sermon, A Model of Christian Charity. Heading for Boston and facing the fear of the unknown aboard the Arabella, Winthrop's very compassionate and not very Puritan message to his fellow Puritans was unmistakable. We must uphold a familiar commerce together in all meekness, gentleness, patience, and liberality. We must delight in each other make each other's conditions our own, rejoice together, mourn together, labor and suffer together, always having before our eyes our commission and community in the work as members of the same body. So shall we keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Winthrop's message is clear, there's safety in numbers. While Lent is an individual exercise, it's at the same time a communal thing. We must delight in each other, make each other's conditions our own. Grace is acceptable to anyone and everyone who has faith enough to seek it. So to put a period on this, the gospel appointed for today is just about the one most everybody knows. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. That well-known line is the very personification of grace. God wants us to to have all the grace that faith can provide in the worst of circumstances. The gospel continues, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. It's incumbent upon all of us that in lifting up throughout Lent, we remember each other. To me, this portion of the gospel best communicates why we put such a special emphasis on Lent as a search for grace using our faith to put an end to fear. Indeed, God did not send the world, did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. It's obvious that God sought to create an articulation of grace and faith to which everyone could relate. That Jesus and Joseph were carpenters made the images more real and recognizable to me. Everybody has smashed a thumb with a hammer, just like Jesus, only his came with far fewer obscenities. <laughs> those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the Holy Son of God. Again, the gospel author makes the message simple and accessible. Have faith in Jesus and all is well. For having faith will get you the grace in abundance. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. We must remember that fear is the antithesis of faith. It's up to us to boldly go to that light and to follow the faith within us to overcome those fears of everyday life, parenting, illness, financial insecurity, death, and loss. I've got a sneaky suspicion that we're not alone in facing those fears, for we must delight in each other and make each other's conditions our own, and rejoice together. May you live long and prosper.
My siblings in Christ, I invite you to, as you are already. Oh, you're already standing. Okay. Let's continue with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. When your faith is weak and our hopes seem empty, come to us, Spirit, and fill us again. You are rich in mercy, and our need is deep. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lead us to let go of the burdens we carry, the guilt, the shame, the unrealistic expectations, the fear. Lead us to depend on you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide each of us in the decision-making of our common life, in our family, relationships, churches, and communities. Mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all on the parish prayer list, especially Rick, Chris, Felicia, Luann, Katie, Elizabeth, Paul and Nancy, Tara, Kim, Robert, Misty, Stacy, Moira, Alex, Dylan, Kay, Michael, Doug and Christy, Larry, Roger, Steve, Maureen, Jeff, Kay, Sonny, Betty, Pat, Piper, Ayla, William, Phil, Gail, Peter, Ethel, Aiden, Eddie and Nancy, Cindy, Christopher, Felipe, Diane, Florence, Oscar, Joseph, Patrick, Ernie, Keith, John, Janet, Paul, Doreen, Judy, Donna, Jason, Braden, Pam, William, Lynn, Jeffrey, Catherine, and John. Pull us closer to your compassionate heart. We pray for those in pain, for those who worry, for those whose livelihood is fragile, and for those who grieve. In mercy, hear our prayer. We remember Michael, our presiding bishop, Sally, our bishop, Marshall, our rector, Elizabeth, our associate, and Ava, our seminarian. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we give thanks for the Episcopal Church. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we give thanks for, for the members and ministry of the adaptive leadership small groups. We give thanks for those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Andrew, Katie, Danielle, Patricia, Cliff, and Liliana. We remember those serving in the military, especially Nicole, Matthew, Matthew, Daniel, Shelby, and Brian. Push us into the world to be advocates for your expansive love among all the creatures you have created. Lord, Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive those who have died into the arms of your abundant mercy. In your mercy, hear our prayer. 
O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who hast brought us safely to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that we, being ordered by thy governance, may do always what is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. I bid you peace and grace this day, and as we uh, continue in worship, uh, I want to remind all that you are welcome home here at St. Peter's, and uh, we rejoice in your presence as well as in the transformation that you will that you will create in our midst. We are grateful for that. There is a lot going on today. Um, Rosita, you got a minute to come up, and we'll talk a little bit about diocesan convention. I'll hand you a mic and you can uh, give your reflections. Rosita was uh, remote and uh, Craig and Jean and I were in person. So I'll I'll let you go first and then I'll I'll end the plane. Uh, The convention was, I always enjoy it because um, I enjoy the the prayers and the the singing, the organ, the mass, but, um, and there was, quite a big agenda that the bishop has, and this was her first convention, you know, as our bishop, and she did a, a, a really good job. She kept things pretty organized and, and going, because there could be a lot of dead time. Um, uh, there was some, you know, usual controversies, like, that are present at this moment in our political and social life outside, and, um, but she handled it really well, and uh, I was very surprised. Um, if you really get um, a feeling of, ha- of what happens outside of this church, because we're used to, you know, this is the life of St. Peter's in Spotswood, but when you see the other churches and what's going on over there, and uh, unlike many, like myself, who's like a geek with, you know, <laughs> <laughs> with uh, I get the bishop's address every every week, and her writing is is excellent. And if you read her letters, um, and they're free, you can go on to the website in uh, in um, in Trinity Church. It, it's it's just wonderful. Um, the controversy was over the Israel Hamas you know issue that's going on. And um, to her credit, um, there was quite a bit of discussion about it when it came to vote for a resolution that we, you know, that they proposed. And the resolution was not on the meetings prior to the, um, to the bishop, to the convention. So I was kind of surprised, but not surprised, because it is going on outside, politically and socially. So to her credit, she handled it really well. And um, if you get a chance, please go on the diocesan website, read the bishop's mes- message, read all the things that go on in the entire diocese. You will be surprised. And also take part in the convention. Um, become a delegate. Um, I was able to do it online. Um, I went last year, was really nice. Um, this year, I, I had other issues in the store, so, but I was able to do everything and pay attention to the convention. So if you get a chance, please consider becoming a delegate uh, to the convention. It's, it's really good. We have the second one is in November. So November, I will be on my way again to the convention. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, Rosita. I, I think um, one of the things that was uh, very powerful about this convention, and Rosita alluded to it, um, this is a season of deep and profound change in the diocese. A lot of the structures that we had in place before the pandemic kind of, of limped along until this point. So with the election of a new diocesan and a new set of eyes for all of us, 
Um, she's really drilling down into our deep structures and figuring out what we need to hold on to, what we need to let go of, and what we need to do to really um, connect to where God is leading us as a wider community. So I really give her full marks for that. Because it's difficult to create a whole structure out of that and then to get a thousand people in a room to agree with you, especially Episcopalians. And this goes actually to the, to the resolution we had before us about the Israel-Gaza-Hamas uh, conflict because the essence of the resolution being proposed across the church to go to general convention this summer was to call on Israel to address the issues of the Palestinian apartheid. These are the laws and restrictions placed on Palestinians in Gaza and in the West Bank that restrict their humanity um, and really limit their ability to gain access to a house of worship. Right now it's, Ram it's the beginning of Ramadan and I was listening to the radio. Um, the, the government in Israel has prohibited young men, any, any man under the age of 40 from entering the Al-Aqsa Mosque for the safety of society. Like, it's, it's laws like that, policies like that. Now, it's well and good for us as a church to have opinions and to have, and to have a connection to these wider global issues. But in light of the war right now, it's very difficult to say we believe X and now we expect folks to do Y. And the church um, as a body was considering that, our diocese, and she really kind of navigated us through that. And that's grace. The other thing that happened, and I want to lift up why this is important, is for years through this pandemic and even kind of leading into it, we as a diocese have been sort of existentially struggling. I can tell you, um, I've been at all of these conventions. Rosita's been at quite a few, Jean and Craig as well. We haven't had a good argument over a social issue in a very long time. We've been distracted by issues relating to our survival rather than to the concerns of the wider world and what we are called to exercise in terms of gospel justice. So I know it sounds weird to say that because we were able to argue about this, it's a sign of health, but it really is. And for us as a diocese to sort of start to take on these wider global issues and also to look past literally our own doors is a real grace, and I'm very grateful for that. Um, I, it's important because I also got elected and appointed to the ECS uh, Board of Directors in the diocese. Episcopal Community Services is like our community of ministries, but it's for the whole diocese. And, uh, and the bishop asked me, as well as um, Nina Dixon and uh, Tricia Thorne and Kirk Bonamici as well, to serve on that board and to coordinate our wider outreach community, community efforts in the diocese. So, um, again, how we build those, those ladders and those staircases between us, St. Peter's, and the diocese, between the diocese and all our churches. So I look forward to that. Got a chance to see Father Freddie and uh, hear an update on little baby Bennett, and uh, I've also spoken to Jessica. Jessica will be back with us for Easter Sunday. So, um, yeah, warm up your voices, get ready to sing God's praises, and when we bring that A word back and start singing the joy of the resurrection, we'll be doing that with the organ sounding, the piano ringing, and uh, I asked her as well, we had uh, the Spanish Sanctus uh, at uh, the cathedral, we'll be singing uh, Gloria, Gloria a Ti um, again, so um, we're very ha happy about that. So just um, please do give thanks for that. Um, we have a lot coming up in Eastertide that we'll point to down the way. Um, Ava is not with us today because she's off in Italy with a Latin class trip. I had to drive on 287 for a week up to Madison. Not that I have a problem with going to Madison, it's gorgeous. But she's in Italy and I'm on 287 and we're both in school. I I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> Liz, you got anything? Yes, I'll keep it brief. There are four signups in the back. Um, the first is for, um, in two weeks from yesterday, Saturday, we'll be having our Lenten Quiet Day, um, reflecting on the return of the prodigal son um, by Henry Nowen, and just doing some deep reflection together. So there's a sign up for that. There's also a sign up for Maundy Thursday Dinner Church, which we will be doing again over in the parish hall. We're looking for a couple volunteers to make some soup and 
just also want a head count for food. So um, sign up for that. There's a coffee hour sign up and the night watch um, between uh, keeping vigil between uh, Maundy Thursday and Good Friday. So um, there are there are signups for all of those things. If you have questions, um, see one of us or talk to Chris in the office and we'll be able to support you. Great, thank you. Um, at, the, at the sides and at the back are four day by days. Uh, they're next to the signup sheets and all that, grab those. As well, you will notice there are flower offering envelopes. If you would like to participate in the decoration of the church for Easter Sunday, um, providing flowers, we're gonna again do the exuberant flowers on the altar, as well as the two medallions um, here in the church. Uh, please do contribute to those and make sure we have the commemorations or thanksgivings that you wish to have listed in the bulletin uh, for the great vigil in Easter Sunday. Um, you can do those, we need those uh, by next, the end of next Sunday, if you could. So we appreciate that. Um, again, you can find those uh, flower offering envelopes here and at the back. Um, as well, uh, next week, if you want to come a little bit early to this service, we are going to have an intergenerational rector's forum. We're going to be making a lazarakia in the, uh, in the parish kitchen. These are the little Lazarus buns um, that are filled with uh, sweet meats, uh, nuts, and, uh, and dried fruit that are soaked in honey. And uh, then we wrap them in the bandages, the little, little, little ribbons of bread. And of course, we get the cloves that mark uh, Lazarus's eyes and mouth. Or in the case of one they made last year, Lazarus's eight eyes and six mouths. Um, some of those Lazaruses get a little weird, but you can help with that. So please do join us for that. And also we are going to be observing a, uh, a uh, sort of quasi St. Peter's Day um, gathering. Uh, the Fitzpatrick's and Deckers are going to be offering some food. And uh, from what I'm hearing so far, there might even be a soda bread bake-off. So if you've got soda bread, a soda bread recipe that you consider the best in the universe, you're welcome to bring that with some butter. And we'll do our best to help out consuming all of the uh, carbohydrates. It's a real grace. Yes, Amy. That'll be between the services, coffee hour. Coffee hour, yes. Yeah, it's between the coffee hours. I think that's everything. Sandy has um, shopping cards in the back. Uh, please avail yourself of those. Help us out with our uh, feeding ministries, Alice's Cup and Kelly's Cupboard, as well as our community supper. If you are on your way towards that free turkey or ham, don't be afraid to offer that up as well. We appreciate the support, and those hams are particularly appreciated because they go towards our meals, but also um, we make soup with the bones and uh, it is truly a gift and a meal that keeps on giving. Honored to have you here in our midst. Greatly blessed to have you alongside. Again, welcome home to St. Peter's. You don't have to be a member of the parish to participate. Simply know that we are glad to have you here and your presence brings transformation to our lives and we are blessed. As you come forward, you'll be able to receive the uh, bread here at the center. There are also gluten-free wafers available. A sign for that is simply to put your hand over your heart as if you're about to say the Pledge of Allegiance. We'll make sure you, that you get one of those. And then this gold chalice is for dipping, the silver chalice is for sipping, and we're blessed to have you here. All right. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. And a reminder that our Change for Change jar in the back is for the Holy Land, and uh, we'll be adding that to the uh, Good Friday offering as well.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, who dost bid thy faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by thy word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which thou hast prepared for those who love thee. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth and didst make us in thine own image. And of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. La noche en que lo traicionaron, Jesús tomó pan y después de darte gracias, lo partió y se lo compartió con sus discípulos y dijo, tomen y coman, esto es mi cuerpo que se entrega por ustedes, hagan esto en memoria mía. Después de cenar, tomó el cáliz y después de darte gracias, lo compartió y dijo, beban todos, porque esto es mi sangre de la nueva alianza, que por ustedes y por todos se derrama para el perdón de los pecados. Cada vez que lo beban, hagan esto en memoria mía. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. Con toda humildad te pedimos, oh Padre piadoso, que nos escuches y que con tu palabra y santo espíritu bendigas y santifiques estas ofrendas de pan y vino para que sean para nosotros el cuerpo y la sangre de tu amado Hijo Jesucristo. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us in the language of our hearts, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, O Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. O Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Please join me in the language of your heart with a prayer of humble access. 
We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood 
of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries today? All right. We will see you next week or throughout the week at the daily office. Mira con piedad, Señor, a tu pueblo que se arrodilla ante ti y concede que los que has nutrido de tu palabra y de tus sacramentos puedan dar frutos dignos de arrepentimiento. Por Cristo nuestro Señor. Amen. Look down in mercy, Lord, on your people who kneel before you and grant that those whom you have nourished by your word and sacraments may bring forth fruit worthy of repentance through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.
thousand years, like your your grandmother. Although she looks like your mother. Uh, how does your granny <laughs> think so? Not in any light.